Heyo, we're back again on GT2 Waste Diffusion Server. It's been a little bit since we did one of these stream reviews, so I'm not sure exactly what all I've done since the last one. I know we hadn't done them in a little bit because we weren't really making too much shoreable progress. But now we have made quite a bit, and I'll go ahead and just give you guys pretty much a grand tour of everything and explain what's going on. So, first thing, as you can see, I now have the gravity suit. Yes, this is the actual gravity suit, so I can hover around and move. Pretty cool. Only issue with it is that in the end, well, the power drains a little too fast for my liking. So I'm not going to trust it to fly me around the end in the shell tonight. So I do still have my advanced nano piece. I ain't made the rest of the quantum suit yet. That's actually something I want to try to get done. But I have my nano one. For flying around the end, and pretty much whenever I'm doing that, I'll have this, and then I'll have that one for just being around here. So, as for my ME system here, it is running off of a dual chamber Mac. I've got quite a bit of recipes in here, I've taught it so far. I have gotten into solar panels too, which is pretty cool. I have mined up a whole bunch of resources. I put in ingot here. You can see I've got almost 2,000 things of iron, 500 some aluminum ready to go, all this stuff. The main thing we are keeping track on is our like rubies and chrome. I got 154 ruby dust or rubies sitting there that I can grind up. And I got 23 chrome dust waiting to be cooked up, which is a okay number. It's nothing too. Uh, grand yet, but we're getting there. I'm constantly making up more circuits and stuff to get those made up. But back here, you'll see the little powerhouse of mine. I got uh, 10 of these thermal generators down here pumping away on my lava, which I actually have 15 magma crucibles sitting here with 15 magmatic engines hooked to them, grinding through a bunch of netherrack. Which, in the ceiling, I have a ME cable running hooked up to it. So that while I'm in the nether, I can open up my ender pouch, fill it up with the nether act, and it'll automatically be stored right there. But, so these right here, pretty much out of one bucket of lava, can make a thing of lava and some extra out of the nether act. So that it is pretty much a self-sufficient. I just have to supply it with nether act. But that will make me enough lava to make another bucket and have extra. I'm just pumped over here to these. I do have a nuclear reactor sitting here. It's not usually going to be running. I ain't figured out the full uh, thing I'm going to be doing with this. Currently I'm actually going to set it to nothing so it won't ever put out power. So the reactor will stay shut off for now. I am running two sets of nitro diesel here. I do want to get a better system for doing it. Kind of like I have for my methane. So you see I got two gas turbines in this pipe which goes up to a tank up here in the ceiling. That will store the methane until it burns. So I want to basically copy that and do it for the uh, nitro diesel so I don't have to worry about cells. Have it run over here to this transposer. Which as I make it in my chemical reactor here, out of my hydrogen and carbon will be put in and then I'll get the cells out and it can fill up as it needs. Basically it's a way to keep my cells in my inventory. Because I need a lot of cells for a lot of things. But I got my two chemical reactors sitting here with some extra hydrogen and mainly stuff to make the nitro diesel. This is actually burning some biofuel, which is being made over there, which I'll get to in a minute. I do have a vacuum freezer set up. I do have a sawmill here too, but I haven't got to power it because I haven't really use it for anything. Eventually I'll get it hooked up, find out some use for it. I do have an electrolyzer here for my personal use. It's not an automated one. I do have an automated one down in the basement. But my distillation tower sits here. I'll randomly put it in as I see I need some. 
my imposing compressor over here, which mainly is going to be used for getting my original plates built. That will need a lot of. I also have a uh, canning machine back here that I keep thorium cells in to get all the thorium cells to fill up my reactor with these quads. So I got a second one down in the basement. Oil tank here. I think I have my pump on an infinite one. It's way over there where that pump marker is. I put it out there and ain't had to touch it since, so I'm pretty sure I have a infinite oil thing right there. And fill it up as I go. I do got my tree farm back here pumping away. I need to automate the fertilizer into it because I have my entire base chunk loaded now. I have a chunk loader up on the roof on top of the tree. But that is currently powered by solar panels and wind turbines. Well, five wind turbines. This is where my biodiesel is coming from. At these three stills being supplied by these three fermenters, which is currently supplied by this squeezer. Which is why my tree farm is self sufficient right now. So I can get apples, which will get the whole thing done to get the biofuel done. This gives me a little extra power. This whole thing is pretty much powered off of the charcoal that I get out of the coke ovens from the tree farms. So that pretty much sustains it. I do have a peak fire engine sitting here just in case I need to throw some heat into it real quick. So I can run my other machines here. I got these in here pretty much just to make a couple of these every now and then. And then just some filler machines really here. Stuff for bees. I ain't really focused too much on. Main thing is I got my carpenter sitting here. Which I would love to automate, but there's no real way to do so. Since if I tried to put dirt, sand, or mulch into it, it would end up just filling the inventory. And then it would be kind of a big point. But I have it supplying barger to this chest. Which is being shot up into my peat bog. Which will run what it needs to do off of its own power. I'll show you that setup in a minute here. Right, so let's go ahead and go up there and I'll show you what it's doing. Up here on the roof. I have the tree farm sitting here. Which is running off of two electrical engines. It has these two low voltage solar arrays. Along with these five wind turbines up here. And mills. For some reason they're called windmills. The wind turbines. They're not mills. They're not milling anything. But I can't do anything about that. Then I have the whole peat bog over here, which does its main things off there. It's powered off a peat fired engine, which gets peat from the whole farm, so it's self sufficient right along with the farm. So I have to put nothing into either of these. They both make their own things. Up there is my chunk loader. It will chunk load my whole area here. I have it going all the way around. So pretty much those systems will all run themselves. I don't have to worry about them. Over here is where I'm putting my solar panels right now. See I got eight of these advanced solars. Generate one EU a tick at night and eight EU a tick during the day. I could upgrade them but as far as me and Senior C there is literally no point in doing so. So I don't think we're going to bother with it. At least I'm not. I think he made one just to see what it was, but really there is no point in doing so. So I'm not going to bother with that. But anyways, down here in the basement is where all my automation systems are. Actually, I do want to uh, cut my system here. I don't need it draining my power right now. Can sit there, stay full. All I have to do is cut that cable for now. I can make it a lot more efficient with a lever. That's something I'll deal with later. I know you've all seen how this all works out. Very convoluted, as most of my automated systems are. Everything works together to do what needs to be done. But basically, any ores that I'm out mining, I can put into the end of pouch, which ends up in that chest. Get sucked into the system through there, and basically I have this whole sorting system. So anything that needs mercury to process will be put into that grinder. 
any of the Legolas stuff to grind through with water gets put in that chest and it gets fed in. Then all of the stuff that comes out of them gets put into the system. Depending on what it is, depends on where it goes. If it's like ingots, it goes into a furnace right there. Which will get automatically cooked and put through this pipe. That better have been fucking lightning, not a people getting shot by a skeleton. I don't know. Random things happen. But anyways, they all the ingots and stuff get sorted out through here. I did get the uh, storage buses put on the bottom of all these now. So that's all figured out. Finally a thing that I was supposed to do a long time ago. I am also now making this hot tungsten steel ingots. I might go ahead and build a thing to automate those into the vacuum freezer. I haven't fully decided yet. I also need to uh, either automate this blast furnace the rest of the way or go ahead and maybe switch them. I'm not sure. I have this one automated, but it only does 2,000. Every time the system needs pyrite, it tries to put that stuff in there, but I don't have pyrite, so that's a problem I need to resolve. I either need to just go get a bunch of pyrite and keep it on hand or something. But basically this is automated to put whatever into the top and the other thing into the bottom so I can request things. The issue is it's not at 3000 so I can't do tungsten. I have to do tungsten in this one which is not automated so I have to come down here and do it myself. Well I say it's not, it's not automated to do multiple things. It is automated to do all of this stuff to cook up. So technically I could automate it to do tungsten. Except I have this as an export bus right now. So pretty much anything that I had would automatically go in. I actually don't have to turn it on right now because I had power problems and just never really turned it back on. I could do that and then anything that I would get would be processed but that takes a lot of power. So if I'm having power problems it will end up draining my system and I don't want it doing that. But anyways that's future problems for me to deal with. The new system I set up today actually was this recycler. Basically what happens is it will sit here, recycle anything that gets put into it, scrap comes out and gets stored over here into this box, which gets inputted into the system when it has power. Which actually is one problem that I would have to deal with is that if I don't have it connected, then this will sit here and actually end up draining the power. <laughs> I'm going to have to test this theory out. What we'll go ahead and do for now is I'm going to shut these all off. None of these will run. So if I go ahead and hook my power up and leave it, then that system would stay on. Now, what I need to do is I need to get this recycler and probably my ME system put onto solar. I can do the recycler easily enough, but my system, I might need a couple solar panels to do it. I don't know. I'll try leaving my system on this time, see what happens. Nothing should take power, except for these two, so this shouldn't be too much my system does without my approval. Hmm. It's some work test. But basically, I have an igneous extrude up here powering into the bell, which will go down into the recycler. So it automatically gets cobblestone, gets it scrapped up, ready to go. I can still feed some cobble into it if I need it. And this is something I'm toying with. Basically, I'm going to have this sit here, and anything that I get in my system typically that I don't want, I'm going to put into the storage bus to then get stored into the chest and then automatically shot down into the recycler. Like that sword there. Okay, I don't want that sword. So it will automatically get put in. Along with the bow. Arrows. Anything else stupid that really I don't want. It's a pretty cool idea I'm trying to get done. But then basically what happens is it comes over here. This export bus is taught to make scrap boxes. We'll put it into this chest. Which gets transposed down. And into my matter fabricator here. Which is what is hooked those solar panels up to on the roof. Up there. They get put through the MFSU. Stored into that. Which will make the UV matter. Need to shut my reactor off. 
So basically, the idea is so that I can be gone for an infinite amount of time, and this will make me you you matter the whole time. It's self-powered by the solar panels, self-fed by the recycler, so it should not have any issues unless this gets full of you you matter, which I don't foresee it doing right now. Maybe later, if I do see it do so, I'll have an output to a chest, or output to the system stored in here. So I currently don't have any UU matter because I've been making those solar panels. But pretty much that is how my base is right now. I am at the point where I'm just pretty much stalling at this point to make the fusion reactor. I need to go ahead and start doing that and then I have a whole lot of grinding of resources to do to get that done. The only other thing I ain't really showed you is my end thing. I think this is pretty cool. This is how I'm going to be getting my uh, beryllium that I'm going to need to make my uh, fusion coils for the fusion reactor. It's down here in the end, we each got a direction in the end to go. So my direction, I went out quite a bit from the mainland and then I ended up putting a portal with my portal gun. I did used to have a portal gun that I found in one of the mine shafts. I still need to go through all the mine shafts. I have to go through one fully. And see if I can find a new portal gun. Because my old one was a bacon one. But I ended up falling out of the end. Due to lack of paying attention to what I was doing. And I lost it. So I don't have the portal gun anymore. Luckily the portals do stay though. So... That part's not a problem. So, anyways, if I hop into the end here, and go up here, and I put a portal here, if I hop through it, I land here. Pretty much, this is where I'm going to be killing my Enderman. I have that little platform there that will spawn on. I have a wheat field I put in, along with some cows and sugar cane. The idea is while I'm standing here chopping away at the endermen to get my endopoles to make beryllium, I can take these sticks and silver, make me athems to kill them with. I can then try to enchant them until I get one that actually has like looting on it. That's what I'm wanting to do is get looting. At this enchanting area that I put in here, I can then use the experience that I get to enchant books. And then these books I can put into a magic energy absorber to get power. So essentially, while I'm standing here killing the Endermen, I'm getting the Endopoles I need to make Beryllium, and I'm getting power that I need to get the... I'm not asking questions, but I'm not dealing with that right now. But anyways, I'll get the books out of the farms, because I have the wheat, the wheat, the cows, the sugar cane to make the paper. I do have a bunch of books, but those are from the library. But pretty much I can just sit here and have fun playing with my cows and farm and kill the enemy. That'll get me all the fucking uh, stuff I need to do the reactor. Power and bullet. So, anyways, that is my setup. All the things I got going on right now. Hope y'all have enjoyed. I hope to see you in the next stream. Later.